I hate char charts like this that have lots of bars and all sorts of things. So uh, these ones always make me nervous. This is kind of like what I would see in a hard module and I, I'd start to get a little flustered. But uh, let's go to the passage, right? Which choice best describes data from the graph that supports the student's conclusion? So focus on the conclusion, right? There's going to be some stuff here that maybe doesn't matter, but let's take a look. To understand how expressions of anger in reviews of products affect readers of those reviews, business scholar Desi Yin and colleagues measured study participants' responses to three versions of the same negative review. A control review expressing no anger, a review expressing a high degree of anger, and a review expressing a low degree of anger. Notice, all of that first sentence is very obvious based on this. We've got the different kinds of anger. We have the responses to the review. Okay, great. So, next sentence. Uh, here. Reviewing the data, a student concludes concludes that the mere presence of anger in a review may not negatively affect readers' perceptions of the review, but a high degree of anger in a review does worsen readers' perceptions of the review. Okay, so that's easy to dumb summarize, right? Just let's write a little bit of a, an arrow mathematical thing here. Uh, increase of anger uh, equals uh, worse review, right? High degree of anger worsens perceptions of the review. So let's just stick with that. Let's see what we get. Choice A. On average, participants' ratings of the helpfulness of the review were substantially higher than were participants' ratings of the reviewed product, regardless of which type of review participants had seen. This is a great example of something that sounds really complicated, but there's really only one part that sticks out to me, the end. Regardless of which type of review participants had seen. That is a way of saying that the review uh, doesn't matter, right? Regardless is a word that's very dismissive. So it's a way of saying that whether the review had a lot of anger, no anger, a little anger, didn't matter. But the entire point of what we read here is that the review mattered, right? That more anger worsened the review. So this is easily, we don't even have to check to see if this is true. It's not right because it's dismissing the entire point of the experiment, the entire point of their conclusion. So uh, easy to get rid of, but this is a good reminder that there are certain words and phrases that you need to notice carry a lot of weight. It's not really about all the, the science stuff. It's here that they just said the word regardless that kind of did it for me. They're dismissing the very thing we're trying to measure. Uh, B. Compared with participants who saw the control review, participants who saw the low anger review rated the review as slightly more helpful, whereas participants who saw the high anger review rated the review as less helpful. Well, I don't really care about the beginning part. That part doesn't, I don't, I don't, I didn't really follow that, but this part I'm highlighting is basically what we did here, right? It, it, it's the same thing. Participants who saw the high anger review, right? As anger goes up, rated the view as less helpful. The review went down. So for now, that's all I need. I don't need to pick B quite yet because I, I don't know what's going on in the beginning half of the choice. But if everything else is clearly wrong, then I don't care what's going on in the first half of the choice. Let, let's just pick this because that's all that's left. So let's look at C. Participants who saw the low anger review rated the review as slightly more helpful than participants who saw the control review did. But participants' attitude toward the reviewed product was slightly worse when participants saw the low anger review when, than when they saw the no anger review. Oh my God. See, if you got lost in that, I understand. But what is it missing? It's missing the high anger review, right? We need this high degree of anger. I don't see that here, right? Low anger review, control, right? The review is probably more helpful than who's the control, right? What's the control? Control is no anger, right? Uh, participants' attitude toward the review product was slightly worse than participants who saw the low anger review than when they saw the no anger review, right? This is missing the very thing that we saw at the end of the passage that we're supposed to be caring about. So, Again, I don't, I'm not going to bother to understand it more deeply than that. It's missing the very thing that we need. Uh, let's look at D. Compared with participants who saw the low anger review, participants who saw the high anger review rated the review as less helpful and had a less positive attitude toward the reviewed product. Okay, well, in general, that seems right. High anger, right? So high anger equals less helpful, less positive, less positive review. So that seems good. And this happens, right? We have two choices that seem to say the same thing. Now we can go and check, right? Because what is this doing? This is comparing it to the low anger review, right? Okay, is that is that true? So low anger, right? This is so stupid how they did this, right? Because look at the look at the bars. You can see it here too. They're they're not in the order that you would expect, right? No anger is the top. Then for some reason we skip all the way to high anger. Then we go to low anger, right? Shouldn't it be no anger, low anger, high anger? Why did they do that? Just to mess with you, just to be mean. There is no reason for them to do that other than to mess with you. So it's annoying, but you gotta expect it. 
So is the high anger review worse uh, or hurting people, hurting the review more than the low anger? Well, yeah, so here's high, here's low, here's high, here's low, and yeah, it seems lower, right? And this is their rating, so more positive ratings are higher bars, right? I'm just reading the chart. So this seems true. So what do we do? Well, B and D both seem similar. This is where we need to think of uh, what I've called in other videos a wedge, right? We have two choices. They look very similar. This happens to a lot of you, I'm sure. You get two answers that you're like, oh my God, these are the same thing. How do I know that, how to tell them apart? Well, obviously they're not the same, right? They're different in some way. So you need to focus on just the choices. Don't go back to that passage. Don't go to the chart, right? Focus on the choices. What is different between them? So if I look at B&D, they both seem to talk about the high anger review, right? So high anger review is there. Uh, they both also seem to talk about the low anger review, right? So low, high, right? Uh, high. The difference that I can see is that B also talks about the control, okay? So uh, maybe that matters. Now we can check B for accuracy, right? The control uh, participants saw the low anger review rated the review as slightly more helpful. So the control is this other one I haven't labeled, right? So that's the control. So the low anger review is maybe more helpful, right? It looks a little higher right here. It's so hard to tell, but right here's where I'm looking. The black bar looks a little higher than that gray bar on the left. So that's it. Do they talk about the attitude? Uh, not in choice B. So in terms of accuracy, it seems okay. Let's go back to the passage, right? What, what can we see? Do they want me to include the control? That's basically the question that this wedge is asking me. Should I include the control or ignore it? So let's look at the, the, the paragraph again. Reviewing the data, the student concludes that the mere presence of anger in a review may not negatively affect readers' perceptions of the review. Now, they don't use the word control there, but right there in that first part that I ignored before because I didn't really understand it, now I see that they are talking about the control, right? They're saying the mere presence of anger does not affect it. Affect it compared to what? Affect it compared to the control, right? That's the whole point of a control is it's something that we kind of say is their, our, our baseline. So they're not using the word, of course they're not, because that would make it too easy, but they are talking about it in, uh, as a concept, that we are comparing the low anger review to a kind of starting baseline, and we are saying that the low anger review did not dramatically affect things. That is true. We can see that the, the gray bar on the left, the black bar on the right, kind of the same height, right? So that seems true. So I didn't notice it at first, but because I was down to two choices and I found a wedge, I found a difference between them to split them apart. Now I had something concrete to go back to the passage with and look for. And sure enough, something I didn't notice before emerges and turns out to be important. So B is the answer. I would be very confident in this on the test. I do not feel, even though it took me a while to get there, I do not feel like I am uncertain about this choice because I had a good strategy every step of the way. A dumb summary to eliminate two answers pretty quickly. I had to go and check some of the accuracy. That was annoying and tedious and didn't really do much, but sure, I had to do it. And then finally, and I have two choices that seem similar, wedge them apart, find the difference, then go hunting for that concept in the passage, in the graph, because you don't want to just keep rereading without a purpose. You always want to be looking for something, hunting for something. You're much more likely to find it if you've got something to look for.